Hi friends, welcome to Positive Power with your host Michelle Dion. Thank you for joining me for another awesome week. I hope things are going well. You look great. I love that shirt on you. Absolutely fantastic. So the last few weeks we've been talking about a lot of self-care stuff. Um, working on yourself emotionally, forgiveness, um, you know, controlling the things that you can, letting go of the things that you can't. Today I wanted to talk to you about something a little bit different, but equally important. Um, as anybody, as you know, if you know me well, you know that I'm a little bit of a documentary junkie. I love documentaries. I have zero time for, or interest really, um, in like reality shows, and I don't um, watch anything like program television, that sort of stuff. But I watch a lot of podcasts, a lot of interviews, um, a lot of documentaries, that sort of thing. So I just watched in the last couple of days, a really interesting um, interview on the Joe Rogan experience. And it was with Joe Rogan and a gentleman called Matthew Walker. And he's a neuroscientist. And they were talking about sleep. One of those things that we're always questing, but we never seem to get enough of. So some really, really interesting facts. I don't want to make this a super long video. Um, I'm going to actually link the actual video on the Positive Power page for you to check out at your own convenience. It's really long, I'm going to let you know right now. Um, and there's a little bit of swearing at the beginning. So you know, I'll put the, um, the point where you can start if you want to miss a couple F-bombs. But it is so interesting. So check this out. Um, they're talking about when you stay in unfamiliar surroundings or you stay in a hotel room. Half of your brain never sleeps. Half of it does but the other half of your brain is always in fight or flight mode because it knows you're in unfamiliar um, surroundings, which really makes sense when you think of times you've went away and how you may have felt the next day. So that's interesting. They always also talked about, um, it's all about quality more than quantity, although quantity is important. Um, they talked about booze and pot, which is sort of interesting because here in Canada, pot will be legal, um, maybe by the time you're watching this, or within a couple days of when you're watching this. So I thought that was really interesting. They were talking about how alcohol and marijuana actually blocks your dream receptors, which was really cool. So you'll find um, that, so you go out and, and you have a good time, and I don't know if you smoke pot or not, but have a couple drinks or whatever, maybe more than a couple drinks you're gonna find that you don't dream, especially if you only sleep for your regular amount of time, which probably isn't enough. So it was really interesting. So they were saying that you may find though, um, so your brain sort of stores up dream time. So even if you're not getting it, it'll store it up. So if you ever found that you went out one night, let's say you go out, you have a good time, have a few drinks, have a bunch of drinks, have a really good time. And then you come home and Right before you wake up, you have these crazy dreams. And that's tied in with um, the dream receptors in your brain and the fact that it took those first six hours of sleep for the pot or the booze, whatever it was, to get out of your system and then relax deep enough in order for the dreams to happen. And dreams are so important, they really need to happen. Then uh, they got into talking about people who drink every day like alcoholics or people that smoke pot every day from waking up to to um, going to bed and how damaging that is on your dream receptors and what will happen is is if you don't allow yourself to dream because you're doing these things um, which are obviously not healthy for you nothing is healthy for you all the time um, so what they found is you'll start going into delusional delusional thoughts um, and visions and hallucinations during your awake time. And they use some really, really interesting examples, like with athletes. So what they do is they're training so hard and they're doing, you know, somebody, they were talking about actually a cyclist and how this guy hadn't slept for, I don't know how many days it was that they said, but they said while riding the bike, the guy started having, um, like awake dreams, hallucinations. He didn't hurt himself or anything, but they were very vivid. They were very real. He started thinking he was seeing spiders coming out of his running shoes and all sorts of really wacky things. So sleep is so important. And 
we live in this culture, unfortunately, where it's almost like bragging rights. If you can go day to, oh, I don't need that much sleep. I can go to five hours sleep. I'm fine. I'm fine. You're really not fine. You know, it, it really makes a big difference. Um, so he was saying that you need eight hours sleep, which is sort of the old go-to, or more. Did you know, back, um, I don't know, a hundred years ago, the average person got nine hours sleep. And what's interesting is they broke it up. So they didn't do, nobody did like a whole sleeping at one time. They would either do afternoon naps, I'm all for the afternoon nap, afternoon naps, and then maybe seven hours at night, or they do nine hours at night, but you know what they do at midnight? They get up for an hour or so. They get up and they'd eat. They get up and they'd pray. They get up and maybe socialize. They get up, maybe make love, but that's what they would do. So they'd sleep for four or five hours, then they get up for an hour, tend to their business, whatever that is, and then they go to sleep again for a few hours. So really interesting how we've changed. And they talk about the school system, um, how they've done statistics on kids who don't get up ridiculously early to go to school. So they did a comparative study um, on performance of children who had to be at school at eight versus children who had to be at school at nine and they did so much better. It's just so interesting. And it's the things that we take for granted and the things that we try to maximize our time because we're so busy we're like, oh, if I can just get up a little earlier, stay up a little later, it serves no purpose for us. It's actually hurting us. You know, we know that there's different things that we can, like we can heal our own body. We need to sleep for that. One of the things that I thought was interesting, an interesting stat, um, men that get five to six hours of sleep will age um, a decade, like their body will age a decade in advance simply because it totally messes with your testosterone. Did I say that right? I think I did. So these are things that are very, very, very important. So then I came across another site because I was right into this and that one I'm going to share on the positive power page as well. So here's just some interesting facts for you. Uh, 45 to 54 year olds get the least amount of sleep. 31% of people um, sleep less than six hours a night. I totally can't do that. Um, maybe I can, but then I'm napping. I have no problem taking naps at all. Uh, sleep deprivation is linked to obesity. 75% of people with depression also suffer from lack of sleep. 20% of car accidents are tied to sleepy drivers. And this will be no surprise, 97% of teenagers don't get enough sleep. Now, you know, when I think about it, prior to technology, when I was a teenager, I loved my sleep. And my parents were really cool. They let us sleep in on the weekends so we could have a ridiculous amount of sleep if we needed it. But today, what do people do? They jump up and they check their phone, don't they? We're tied in with technology, which is not good for you either. And that's another video that we did a few weeks ago. So there you go, friends. Think about that. Think about how you're treating yourself and make sure you schedule enough time for sleep. Actually, I think I can go have a nap right now. So thanks for joining me. We'll regroup next week. Don't forget how absolutely awesome you are and whatever it is you're trying to achieve in your life, just know it's achievable. Well, not if it's a unicorn, okay? We can't get you a unicorn. But there's other things you can do. If you feel passionate about something, if you feel that your heart is tugging you in a certain direction, go, try, it's okay. You know, sometimes we have to go out of our comfort zone, but that's where the prize is. Keep your eye on the prize. There's nothing you can't have. Have a great week. We'll do this again next week.